invite uh, Chief Inspector Craig Ronan from New South Wales State Emergency Services. Uh, he will talk about the flood disaster management and the some of the uh, preparations and other things they do. So, Craig, welcome. Yeah, good, good morning to those in India and good afternoon to those in Australia. Thank you for the invitation. This afternoon is about the New South Wales State Emergency Service and how we manage our floods, especially related to dam safety incidents. So I'll just walk walk you through that. Um, okay. Um, New South Wales, the State Emergency Service, is a government department here in New South Wales. Our mission is to save lives and create safer communities. And basically, the State Emergency Service is a volunteer organisation uh, with some paid staff, and we do work to deliver and provide excellence in community, community preparedness and emergency response during um, flood events. So we were established in 1955 after some major flooding in the Hunter area of the state uh, where we had a lot, lots of people, uh, loss of life, and the government is, uh, decided to set up the State Emergency Service. We're, we're a volunteer agency, basically operate 24-7, 365 days a year, 9,000 volunteers across the state with a combat agency for, for flood, storm and tsunami. And I'll talk about that, what that means in a minute. We provide a lot of rescue. We do road crash rescue, vertical rescue, bush search and rescue, assist the police with evidence searches. We also do a thing called community first responder, uh, where we hear, assist the New South Wales Ambulance Service. We support the Royal Fire Service here during major bushfires, as we did back in 1990. 1920, and also we work closely with the police, ambulance, RFS, and fire and rescue. Basically, the New South Wales SES has a three-tiered structure. We have state headquarters, we have zone headquarters, and we have units. Our state headquarters is based in Wollongong. We have a state operations centre that operates, again, 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We have an emergency number, 132500. And for dam-related incidents, dam owners call 1300 737 326 to alert us of any potential um, issues with their dams, either flood events, during flood events, or what we call in Australia here, Sunnydale failure with uh, dam failure relating to earthquakes. And we also have a state command centre. Um, we have seven zone headquarters spread around the state, and we have 243 units right uh, located right through the state of New South Wales. Uh, very quickly, there's a map of New South Wales. And as you can see, it's got Western Zone, Southern Zone, Southeastern Zone, Northern Zone, Metro Zone, Northwestern and Northeastern Zone. So that's basically their population in New South Wales is on the East Coast, the, east, the Eastern half of New South Wales. And as you move West, there's there's it's not so populated. Uh, there's a picture of Warragama Dam last year um, that released water. It's Sydney's main water supply, and it floods uh, flows through the Nepean Hawkesbury River system and floods Penrith right through to Hawkesbury and caused quite a bit of extensive flooding last year in, to the residents living in Sydney. Um, this, we operate under the State Emergency Service Act, and we also in New South Wales have a thing called the State Emergency Rescue Management Act. And we have a thing called the state, New South Wales State Emergency Plan, which defines which government agency or which emergency service undertakes what, what duties. Which fires are controlled by the Rural Fire Service, um, like exotic animal diseases are uh, managed by Department of Private Industries. We're the common agency or lead agency for flood, storm and tsunamis. In New South Wales, we have a state flood plan, we have a state storm plan, and we have a state tsunami plan. And we have also have regional end plans that we have flood emergency flood sub plans at a regional level, at a local level. And our flood plans consist of three volumes. Uh, the graphic there shows the three volumes. The volume one is basically roles and responsibilities of the agencies that support us when a major flood event occurs. Volume two is all about the hazard and the risk. Um, and that information is obtained by flood studies that is that are conducted by local government. And we also take into account dam break studies 
by the dam owners. And volume three are specific arrangements for evacuating communities, uh, providing warnings um, and issues for very specialised areas that suffer from flooding. In conjunction with our plans, we require in New South Wales, the New South Wales Dam Safety Act, we work very closely with Dam Safety in New South Wales, um, and they have we have dam emergency plans, which are the same as your dam action dam action plans, dam emergency action plans. We need to know the consequences. We have three trigger levels: white, amber, and red. White means that there's a potential for something happening in the dam, but it's it's not serious. It's a heads up. Amber means that there's an increased risk, and red alert means that we have to start looking at evacuating people to safety in downstream of the particular dam. Um, we actually review the plans here in New South Wales for the dam owner and provide feedback. And then we incorporate the consequences of the dam failure into our emergency response plans, back into our, fl our flood emergency sub plans. Uh, New South Wales, we, we participate with dam owners in conducting exercises. And the exercises are both a desktop exercise and a practical exercise in the field. They're conducted by dam owners. And we participate in that to learn more about the infrastructure and how it may impact flooding. And the dam owner learns about what we're trying to do so we can have a better partnership. The second point there, we really, we're building a strong working relationship with the dam owners right across New South Wales. And that comes in handy when something happens because we know the people we're dealing with. Exercises allow us to test our dam emergency plans to make sure the material in the dam safety plan and the and the arrangements in the plan are actually suitable in a safe environment. And after the exercise, we have a debrief or an after direction review, and we actually review the contents of the plan and look at what we could improve in our response plans and our warnings to the community if, it, if it's need. We call them lessons learned here in Australia. So how do we prepare for a flood? Um, the New South Wales SES in our State Operations Centre, we have an embedded meteorologist and a hydrologist. Obviously the meteorologist tell us how much rain's going to fall and the hydrologist actually says, this is the impact. Um, and they're, they're from the Bureau um, of Meteorology, the Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. Based on that rainfall and working with dam owners, we look at the inflows to dams, we look at the outflows and what the water is being released, and we can actually work on flood models um, and say at this height, this much water being released from the dam is going to flood this community, and we can actually start looking at the impacts. Uh, the Bureau Bureau of Meteorology, we call it the bomb over here, gives us forecasts and predictions. We have an extensive flood intelligence system that we have. All our flood gauges downstream of the dam, we have specific information at the consequences for a certain gauge height. So that helps us um, plan for our response and it helps us also educate the community and warn the community during a flood event. We establish an incident control centre, an ICC, and we staff it with um, our members and other agencies if we need to. Uh, it's called an incident management team. We use the Australasian Inter-Service Incident Management System, um, which is called AIMS, and we use that to run our incidents. Um, it's an ICS system, incident control system. It, it's in different forms around the world in different countries, but in, in Australia and New Zealand, in the Pacific, we use AIMS. And we also have a partnership with our emergency operations controllers at local and regional level, and we brief at the emergency operations controllers that provide support to our agency. We also need to warn the community of an impending flood or indeed a dam failure. Um, and we issue warnings to the community with what's happening and public safety information using the Australian warning system. And I'll show you a graphic on that shortly. We have a website or an app. Um, it's called Hazard Watch. It's only a new product that was developed last year. We had three years of extensive flooding um, and that is used to distribute the warnings to the public and it's it's working very well. Um, when the Bureau of Meteorology updates their flood forecast or predictions we issues a new warning, we update that information on Hazard Watch um, so the community, the media 
our partners in the emergency services and councils and government um, know what the consequences are. Hazard Watch is an app, and Hazard Watch can also be absent, also accessed on the web, and it's on our web page, our home page, and um, you, we can actually look at it, look at it there. The Australian warning system um, has been developed over a number of years. Um, it basically, uh, um, uh, the fire agencies here in Australia and New South Wales use the same system. We issue advices, watch and acts and emergency warnings. So, and the warning has an action statement. So if it's an advice, we want you to stay informed, monitor the conditions and reduce the threat, return to caution when the event is over, when the flood is over. If it's a watch and act, we want people not to go into flood water. We want people to prepare to evacuate, prepare for isolation and avoiding the area. And if it's actually a goes to red and emergency warning, we tell people to evacuate. Evacuate before a certain time, before their access route gets cut and shelter now or move to higher ground. Um, and we work with the other agencies, especially the emergency operations controller, to set up evacuation centres and welfare centres for those people we evacuate. So that's a very quick summary of what the SES does here, New South Wales SES does here in Australia, how we actually prepare for floods, working closely with dam owners so we understand if the dam were to fail, what are the consequences and how that's going to impact the community so we can actually warn and provide assistance to the community if that dam were to fail. So I just want to share another quick presentation with you. Um, I'll just go to the screen. Okay, get out of that. Get out of that. And I want to give you a bit of a case study of the floods that we've had in the last... Um, Few years. I'll just share my screen again. Is that? Can you see that? I'm not so far. Okay. Let me go there. How's that? Looking yeah, good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Um. Okay. I'll just get it there. So you Put in see. presentation mode. Yeah. The second yeah. one. That's it. Yeah. That's a bit slow. Um. New South Wales and most of Australia was in a rare situation um, in recent years. We had three La Ninas in a row. And that's I think that's happened about three times in Australia's um, history or settled history with European settlement. Um, it's very rare to have three La Ninas. And the rainfall that occurred was actually accumulating every year. The catchments were getting wetter. Um, and that caused record flooding last year. And I'll just walk, walk you through this. Um, from November 2021 to March this year, we had 479 days of consecutive flooding. Um, and it, I spent um, the last couple of years working in incident control centres uh, doing what I call the, the intelligence role, actually, and flood analyst role, working what was happening, talking to the Bureau, talking to dam owners and, and actually forecasting and, and guessing the, not guessing, but actually working out what the consequences are going to be. 34 river catchments in New South Wales had flooding. And some communities, you may have heard of Lismore in India. I'm not sure if the media made it over there, but Lismore got flooded two or three times with record flooding. Um, and places like Forbes out west, uh, Baptist here where I live, got flooded. Every community had some sort of flooding last year and some had multiple mul multiple major flooding. Um we could run a rough calculation that during those flood events, we've, the volunteers and staff at the New South Wales SES spent a, a minimum of 1.5 million hours um, assisting the community and warning the community during those events. We assisted by interstate, other states in Australia, and we actually had an international deployment of flood rescue team from Singapore that actually went to Forbes to help with their flood event. And we had teams from New Zealand as well. So the flooding was such a scale biggest flooding New South Wales has ever seen. Um, we had international deployments. We issued something like close to 10,000 flood warnings across New South Wales during that event. And at one stage, 500,000 people in New South Wales were subject to evacuation orders. So this was a fairly um, big event, the scale for New South Wales. 
Um, if you just look at that map of New South Wales, you can see that the red is the major river, major flooding on based on gauges, and the orange is moderate flooding. So right across the whole of New South Wales, we had flooding. It was pretty, uh, probably a, a once in a generation event, but given climate change, uh, we're going to get less rain, but when we do get rain, it's going to be more intense and more more at a given time. We're probably going to see this again. Um, interesting facts: we had support from interstate contingents, international deployments. As I said, we actually adopted and started to implement the Australian warning system, which has proved to be a a really good strategy. It's actually making it easier for the community to understand the warnings and what we want them to do. We've used. Uh, for the first time, we've actually used some high clearance vehicles and we've got them in our fleet now. So we can actually get to isolated areas to pick the back rescue people or um, to do medical resupply or, or whatever needs to be done. Um, some communities, as I said, had 10 to 15 flood peaks. Um, and you know, the community is still working through that as we speak. Um, it was interesting that 106 dams actually reached white alert seven reached amber alert and five reached red alert. So obviously we a flood was happening, but we had to manage the dams at the same time and work with the dam owners of the consequences. We had 16 confirmed floods of record, floods that we've never seen before that at the height of the water. And for us, that 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 was a big thing. We had loss of life, unfortunately. Um, Lismore has a coroner's inquest, so does a small town called Yagara that lost two people. So this stuff is before the coroner's court as we speak. The coroner will probably come out with some recommendations about future flood operations. Uh, we're supported by other states. And we also, on top of all that, in February 20, 2022, we had a land-based tsunami threat in Lord Howe Island, which is off the coast of New South Wales. So we had a, a tsunami. It wasn't a huge threat, but there was a um, tsunami. Um, just shows the, the symbols of the early warning system. As you can see, the the red ones are uh, evacuation orders. Um, the orange ones are, you know, not that quite serious. And then you've got the yellow one, which is the advice. So you, the previous presentation, I showed you the triangles. That's just the indication of our the Australian warning system. And that's what the app and the website shows. You can actually click on one of those triangles to get the data or information you need from that um, information. We're also conscious not everybody has the internet or has a phone. So we, we do it by traditional ways also, by door knocking properties and warning the residents and working with the police and other agencies to help us do that if, if it's a flood event. Um, so pictures of some flooding there um, across the state. You can see in the top right there, that's one of our high clearance vehicles. We call them Unimogs. Um, basically, the Australian Army had them. Um, they don't use Unimogs anymore, so we've actually taken some old ones of theirs, um, rebadged them, and we're actually buying them as part of our fleet now. And you can see at the bottom left there, um, some of our flood boats that we use to actually, our flood rescue technicians, we have switched I have people are trained for swift water rescue, and we also have a fleet of flood boats to um, help people uh, when floods occur. And obviously, um, the flooding that we eased here in New South Wales at the moment, we're going back into drought uh, with La Nina. But last week, we had some flood events on the south coast, and we had a couple of communities, um, Lake Conjola, where we had 40 houses inundated. Um, we're supposed to be back in the drought, but we're getting these short, sharp bursts of intense rain, and it's causing um, flooding. So that we're not out of the woods with a flood threat yet. And that's actually a community in Lismore um, saying thank you to uh, the SES, but all the emergency service personnel and people here in Australia and that help with that response. And there's the impact of rural flooding. Um, New South Wales, as I said, the East Coast, we have a thing called the Great Dividing Range. It's a high mountain range that goes through close to the coast, but west of that, um, inland New South Wales basically flat, and when we get floods, it inundates large area of rural farmland and places like that. It affects crops, it affects livestock, sheep and cattle, and kangaroos and the native wildlife also suffers. 
uh, during flood events. And this water out west here can stay in places for up to a month or a couple of months before it drains into the Murray-Darling Basin system, um, goes through the um, South Australia back into the ocean. So that's my presentations and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Craig, uh, for your detailed presentation and what you do and how you do. And uh, your group does a very important work. And um, I think the last slide you showed uh, how community appreciate what you do. So that's great. And uh, I think uh, your group does a lot of work, the SES. Uh, in a very detailed way. And as you mentioned, you issued uh, 10,000 warnings uh, uh, during the last flood in Lismore. So that's a very important work you do. And, and uh, I, but, Yes, sorry. Greg. Yeah. I, I can't stress the importance, especially for people that are owning and operating dams, to have a good relationship with the emergency service that helps you with the flooding in the community. Because yeah. that relationship paid for itself last year in New South Wales, we we're building stronger relationships now. So it's uh, that's a, it's a really good to work. The the combat agency or the emergency service works with the dam owners to understand the flood risk. I can't stress that enough. And actually, in the emergency, your SES is the hope. People go with the hope that they will come and help us. So your group is very important, and there are many things. Uh, uh, our colleagues in India can think and what can be learned from each other. And I think you gave a good example here. So thank yep. you.